Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and it's a Young Boy Never Broke Again episode of Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. You know this year has already started out surprisingly turbulent that an album bomb week is actually something close to a cool down than anything else. Because yes, Young Boy Never Broke Again got just enough songs to slip into album bomb territory with the new mixtape, and outside of that, looks like things have stabilized a little bit. That's at least promising, right? And I say that even as we now have a new number one in our top ten, and one where, while I'm not exactly surprised, I'm not exactly pleased about it either, we don't talk about Bruno by the Encanto cast. If this is surprising to folks, it really shouldn't be. The streaming margins for the song have been absolutely insane, it got a sales discount this week, and there's not really much in the way of dominant hits that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. Hell, I fully expect Easy On Me by Adele to rebound back to number one, even though it's down to number two. Because while the song has absolutely peaked pretty much everywhere, its margins are still strong enough in every other channel to beat We Don't Talk About Bruno, which still doesn't have any radio. But outside of that, for once the majority of our top 10 is pretty static. Heat Waves by Glass Animals remains stalled out at number 3, without much movement in every channel, but it keeps it above Stay by Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber at number 4, which might have radio inertia, but is losing on streaming and is pretty much in freefall. Unfortunately, that probably opens up the door for Super Gremlin by Kodak Black at number Number five, which actually picked up streaming and is still very much on a radio run, and that'll likely keep back Shivers by Ed Sheeran at number six, which is also stagnated in all channels. Now, I would say this opens the gateway for Pushin' P by Gunna and Future featuring Young Thug as the meme that will not die at number seven, but it also slipped a little bit on streaming, and the radio pickups have not been all that quick, and it does leave it vulnerable to be overtaken by ABCDEFU by Gale at number eight, which is surging on the radio while having some consistent strength in every category. This is not far from breaking through, just wait. But that leaves the only other shift in the top 10. Surface Pressure by Jessica Darrow got a boost thanks to the Encanto pickups to number 9, and that pushed back Cold Heart PNAU remix by Elton John and Dua Lipa to number 10, where even if it's more consistent in other channels, it's hemorrhaging airplay definitely on the way out. Now that takes us to our losers and dropouts, where it looks pretty reasonable, all things considered, with the latter category populated with the remains of Gunna and the Weeknd's album bombs, My Universe by Coldplay and BTS, and a few leftover Drake songs that I'm fairly sure nobody's gonna complain to see go. Way Too Sexy featuring Future and Young Thug, and Girls Like Girls featuring Lil Baby. Good riddance. And I can't say our losers are surprising here either. Off the debut, Iffy by Chris Brown fell to 100, and Easy by The Game and Kanye West hit 70. Gonna continue to see big losses with 25k Jacket with Lil Baby at 92, Thought I Was Playing with 21 Savage at 88, at Too Easy with Future at 65, and P Power with Drake at 52. And The Weeknd saw a couple drops as well with Take My Breath at 85 and Sacrifice at 37. The only other losers... Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish making its gradual exit at 47, and Whiskey and Rain by Michael Ray hopefully stalling out at 62. Again, good riddance. Now our returns and gains this week, they are a little bit weird. Mostly because you can tell the Hot 100 is still trying to reset to some sort of equilibrium. But what the hell that even is leaves me a little bit concerned. I mean, who is really asking for I Love You So by the Walters back at 81? Or Me and Some by Nardo Wick, Lil Baby, and Future at 90? Or I Am Woman by Emmy Melly at 99? Yeah, Home Sweet by Russell Dickerson's actually okay at 94, but it also brought back Come back as a country boy by Blake Shelton in 96. And with our gains, well, a chunk of these are just in Kanto, with All of You by The Cast at 82, Waiting on a Miracle by Stephanie Beatrice at 48, and The Family Madrigal at 20. But then we got Message in a Bottle by Taylor Swift, where she seems to be trying to slowly power this as a sleeper hit at 57, and then Cold December by Rod Wave off the debut to 38, and I'm still not quite comfortable with that song. Unfortunately, it doesn't end exactly well here. AA by Walker Hayes got a big album boost to 55, and Fish Scale by Young Boy Never Broke Again caught its boost to 68. And speaking of which, we got an album project that just slips into the rules, so the songs that are neither the best nor the worst of this week and fell below the top 40 
which was all of them. Smoke One at 97, probably the best of the songs that charted. Long Live at 87, Too Who at 86, No Like I Know at 74, though this one was pretty close. It's bad, and Youngboy should be smart enough to stop insulting dead rappers and his enemies' families. Flossin' with Internet Money at 72, and No Switch at 58. All right, this is ultimately very reasonable list of new arrivals left, so let's start off with number 91, Beautiful Lies by Young Bleu and Kalani. Oh, tell me beautiful lies. Am I the only one who thinks that this is a collaboration that actually makes a lot of sense? I might be lukewarm at best with Young Bleu, but pairing with Kalani for an R&B team up given their place in the game right now seems like it's set up to win. It makes sense, especially as a late album single. And as such, songs are actually pretty decent. Young Bleu and Kalani have okay chemistry. The spare guitar with the occasional trap skitter is pretty well balanced. And I like the overall idea of this song, where both of them are kind of lightly toxic in the back and forth relationship, but there is a balance to how much they call each other out and are yet drawn back to each other by pretty words that ultimately wind up pretty empty. I don't know, it's a decent sentiment in which to pull together a smoldering R&B song. I just wish the smolder was a little bit better, and that might be a factor of the hook feeling a little bit undercooked, lacking a little bit of variation in the composition to flesh things out. Don't get me wrong, it is decent, but it lacks that little spark to make it truly great. Not bad. And if it's going to be a radio slow burn, I don't mind it, just not great either. Number 89, Dis and That by Young Boy Never Broke Again. Why do I get the feeling that Young Boy Never Broke Again effectively released this mixtape as a way to air out all his grievances with everyone as a half step away from his usual album rollout? And if so, why is anyone caring or giving this attention beyond the drama? This song in particular is a glaring example. The piano melody is smothered by the overweight bass hits and the sputtering trap percussion. There's no real structure or flow of the song to speak of. And the entire concept at the center of the song is young boy bitching at a Twitch streamer because he was mad young boy used his burner account to like this streamer's girlfriend's IG post. This is scattered incoherently next to the other disc bars where he once again takes shots at the late King Vaughn and missed a lot of interchangeable gunplay. And I'm just left thinking, if this is what you've resorted to writing songs about, you need to find a new muse or retire. This is the definition of reckless, pointless, and stupid. Not only do I not believe young boy what he says that he doesn't have Instagram or social media, why be so goddamn defensive either way? You're supposed to be a star. If you're at this stage of your career, Career, this should be beneath your concern. I mean, it looks like the hard drugs that he even admits are amplifying his pettiness, and the music's turned to crap along with it. I don't like this. Next, number 73, Proud by Key Glock. I can get it back in blood, but still I can't get back the time. Hey, fuck that humble shit, let's go, you know I'm spazzing out by mine. I got Dolph looking down on me, I know that nigga proud. So Key Glock is one of those artists that's on the periphery of rappers that I knew about, but he hadn't really charted, so I hadn't had the chance to really delve in deeper. Mostly I knew him from his association with Young Dolph and a couple mixtapes that they made together. So I guess I shouldn't be all that surprised that Key Glock made a tribute song to the late Young Dolph after he passed away, and I think it's interesting interesting how it plays out, because while I have heard better in this lane, I do think this works for what it is. The dour, trap-inflected production with a thin melodic sample, and Key Glock's somewhat muted voice could convince you that the track is like any other Southern Flex song. But drill a little bit deeper and you can tell that Key Glock really wants to try and carry on Young Dolph's legacy in Memphis, continue to build the label and the scene. And while he's going to flex a little bit in tribute, it's not enough to obscure by how much this this really hurts him, especially in the moments where he describes himself just breaking down, or how it really translates well into his delivery. Now, I don't quite think as much as a conventional tribute, so much as a reassurance that he's gonna try and keep Young Dolph's legacy alive, and even as someone who was not a fan, I respect that. So yeah, it's a good song. I'll take that. Number 60, Bring It On by Young Boy Never Broke Again. I see a new hat, nigga with a blue flag, big Mac, nigga no, I let go. I gotta honestly wonder how long Young Boy and his producers spent refining any of these songs, because just on a production basis, 
It sounds like shit. The bass swamps out everything, the rickety guitars can't blend, the late 2000s-esque synth horn sounds dated as all hell, stuck in this mix, and then Youngboy wants to try the whisper game on top of this production to sound menacing, and wow, it doesn't work at all. That sort of delivery works with minimal production in order to build suspense and some atmosphere, but when you're gonna leap straight into the croon rapping right afterwards, the atmosphere fails completely and uh, from there the contents your expected over the top violent gunplay where the song structure never actually builds or pays off all that well especially not anything passing for a hook but what i think annoys me the most here is how he tries to throw in a couple passing bars about wanting just to be left alone raise his kids do it all in god's name after all they're the ones who are actually going out there provoking him when you put that on a project over stuff with threats against plenty of people who wouldn't otherwise have beef with you while you're under house arrest in Utah when you then diss their family and their dead friends. Somehow, young boy, I'm not likely to believe you. Especially when your song sucks this much. Next. And finally, number 42, Light Switch by Charlie Puth. I guess I'm a little bit surprised that Charlie Puth still wants to make music beyond just being behind the scenes as a co-writer or producer. If voice notes proved anything, it was how little he liked being in front of the spotlights. But that album was a marked improvement, and it did leave me curious where the hell he'd take this next self-titled project four years later. And... You know, it reinforces a suspicion that I've had for a long ass time that Charlie Puth should probably bring more people into the studio, because while he can do it all by himself, he's kind of a prodigy in this lane, I'm not sure it's always the best option. Yeah, the bass groove is bouncy going for this brand of light 80s funk, but with the percussion as lockstep as it can feel against the splashy guitar textures, it feels weirdly stiff and small to play off that light switch sample, where you gotta wonder if someone else besides Charlie Puth produced the song might have a little bit more flair or swell to it and then there's the content and speaking of things stiff and small charlie puth clarifying that you got at me in a tight grip it means exactly what you think it does and it kind of makes me wish that he had left this sort of back and forth relationship more metaphorical i'm not sure i needed a song on the radio where not only is the light switch a very visual metaphor that leads to charlie puth then getting a hand job you're nearly my age dude you don't need to make this sound so innocent just fuck already. And as such, I'm just kind of a little bit distant from it. Not exactly bad, but not one I can see getting a lot of traction unless a meme or the radio gets on board. Gotta say it. And honestly, just not for me. Go for more. Come on. But that's a shorter week, and the best and the worst actually fall out pretty fast. For the best, I'm gonna go with Proud by Key Glock, with honorable mention for Beautiful Lies by Young Blue and Kalani. I mean, it's not a great song, but it works for what it is. Now for the worst, yeah, both are going to Young Boy Never Broke Again here, with Bring It On as the worst and Dis and That as the dishonorable mention. Next week, though, I think I might still have a little bit of breathing room. Not much in the way of new releases that seem to be on the horizon, but we'll have to see. I'm open to surprises. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.